Okay, so my name is uh, Tony Vorster, and I am a scientist at Colorado State University, so not far from, from you all, just about an hour away. Um, today, I'm going to share a little bit about me and my research, and hopefully we have time for, to do a little activity together. So I research a lot about uh, climate change in Colorado's forests. That's what I study. Um, so when I say climate change in Colorado's forests, I'm curious, all you students out there, what uh, questions you have about this topic or even what words come to mind? Like what are the first things you think of? Okay, so I see uh, Abby wrote about uh, wildfire and how icebergs are melting and smoke. Okay, so I see a question about what is climate change and how did it happen? Another uh, mention of wildfires. Is the weather changing? Yep. All right, any other thoughts or questions? Feel free to keep adding them to the chat box there. This is a great start. How does it affect all of us? That is a great question. Okay, so today I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about me, talk about um, climate change in Colorado's forest, and then start to talk about the science that I do and uh, the data that um, we collect, how we uh, visualize or look at those data, and then how we uh, talk about the science that we do and, how, um, and the findings. So I grew up in California, uh, and I grew up um, playing a lot of basketball uh, and soccer. And um, when I was a kid, I really loved uh, looking at pictures of the rainforests, like in uh, like Brazil and things. And I just always thought how cool it would be if uh, one day I could I could study forests. And so I feel very um, excited and lucky that um, those forests that I looked at pictures of as a kid, I, I now get to spend time in and, and study them. During college and after college, I uh, had some jobs where I um, studied bobcats and owls. I would go out all night and um, listen for owls and call for owls um, working for the Forest Service. So in areas where they were going to cut trees, I would go out and, and look for owls. Um, that, that was a great job. Um, after that, I um, became an elementary school teacher and I, I taught third grade in Colorado Springs. And uh, so I, I do miss being in those elementary school classrooms with all of you and wish I could be there in person today. Um, after a few years of teaching elementary school, I came to Colorado State University where I learned how to become a scientist. And that's where I started to study um, bark beetle outbreaks. Uh, and those bark beetles are little bugs that uh, can kill trees. And we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. Um, I also use a lot of, uh, well, I've been learning over the years how to use a lot of uh, satellite imagery to study um, these forests. So pictures from space. So real quickly, let's talk about um, what climate change is looking like in Colorado. So on the left side there in purple, uh, that is showing how the temperature in Colorado has changed from 1900 to about 2015, I guess 2018. And you can see that the it changes a lot every year, right? Some years are warm, some years are colder. Um, but that blue line going through the purple tells you how it's changed in general. And in general, that line is going up um, pretty clearly. And so already here in Colorado, we have warmer temperatures and we are warming up quicker than the, than the rest of the world even. So that has an impact on, there was one question how that impacts all of us, right? That you, you might notice that, uh, everybody notices that, right? Warmer, warmer temperatures, hotter days, um, and it also, the trees notice that. Uh, on the right side in green, that shows how the rain, the precipitation, so the rain and snow, the amount of moisture that falls from the sky has changed from uh, about 100 years ago to 2018. And again, it changes a lot every year, right? That green line jumps up and down a lot every year. But the blue line, the how it's 
uh, changed over time in general is flat. So that means that the precipitation in general hasn't really changed here in Colorado. And um, that's, um, that's the prediction for the future. Well, the prediction for the future with precipitation is that we're not really sure if it's gonna get wetter or drier. But if you have warmer temperatures and the same amount of uh, rain, it's still drier for the plants because that water um, gets sucked out of, the, out of the plants quicker with those, with those warmer temperatures. So we're seeing, this is um, something that you might see if you walk around in the forest in Colorado. These are trees that are normally would be all green, but to see how they have some red needles there. Uh, that means that this tree is a little bit stressed out by drought. It's, it's drying out. And um, this is something that we'll keep seeing in Colorado. When trees are stressed like this, they can um, die from other things like bugs more, more easily. So that's one way that um, climate change is impacting Colorado's forests. Um, another is fire. And that was something that you all mentioned in your comments and that you might be familiar with, and you might've heard about on the news. Um, so um, our snow is melting earlier in the spring so that we have a longer time where our forests are, don't have snow and are, are drier, which means that it's ready for fire. And then we're also getting a lot uh, more of these days where it's really maybe hot, dry and windy, and that can make, to, or that can make for bigger and more severe uh, wildfires. So as you mentioned, yes, wildfire is absolutely another way that climate change is impacting our forests. So um, the map on the left here, is a map of mountain pine beetle killed trees in the year uh, 2000 across Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. And um, so as I mentioned earlier, these bark beetles are little bugs that can kill trees. They, they eat their way into the bark and end up um, drying out the tree and, and killing it. And that's what you see on the right there. See all those gray trees? Those were all killed by little tiny bugs this, the size of a grain of rice. Um, I'm gonna play the, watch the map on the left and watch those colors change every year. So that's 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. And what you're seeing is that those bark beetles that killed the trees are covering more and more and more area across those states. And so what started as just a small amount in 2000 is a very um, large amount in 2012. And there's, um, these bark beetles have been around in our forest for a long, long, long time. Uh, but the reason that this, there was so much area um, impacted by these, by these uh, bugs during this time is that, is really because of climate change. The temperatures were warmer and the, the trees were stressed out from drought. This is, uh, so when I came to Colorado, um, I started to see things like this in the forest where there is areas with lots of dead trees in the red and gray. Those are all trees that are being killed by bark beetles. Um, and there's then there's these areas of green where look, the trees are all surviving. So what, what, what's the difference there between the areas with lots of dead trees and the areas with lots of uh, healthy, green trees. And so that's, um, that's some research that we do to understand why you see these patterns. This is also a great picture for right before Halloween because it looks like a big spooky uh, hand with, with fingers coming out there. So that brings us to our, um, the printout that you have in front of you. That data nugget is about what I've been, what we just talked about with the, with the bark beetles. The question that we're asking is, uh, how does the average size of a tree in a forest influence its susceptibility to mountain pine beetles? So basically, are small trees more likely to be killed or big trees more likely to be killed? So why doesn't uh, everybody take a minute and read uh, the, intro the first page? I think it goes a little bit onto the second page of that data nugget. So I'm going to give you a few minutes now to, and I'll, I'll be quiet so, so you can read. Okay, sounds, looks like people are wrapping up the reading. So uh, now 
uh, as you'll see that next part on your page there, that scientific question, the same one I have on the screen here is on your paper. And the next step is to um, identify, find the hypothesis for that question. So hypothesis is like a, a guess based on what you already know of what you think is gonna be the answer to that question. So go back into that part that you just read and find the hypothesis and you can go ahead and underline it. Yeah, so I see Anthony has found um, a larger tree might be related to whether they were attacked and killed by beetles. So that's that's the start of it. Um, but remember, the question is, how does the average tree size in a forest influence its susceptibility to mountain pine beetles? Yeah, so I see this Anthony starting it there. A larger tree might be easier for a beetle to find and it might be better uh, food for those beetles because it's bigger um, than a, obviously bigger than a smaller tree. So that's, um, that's kind of what we, what we expected to see, but now we had to go out and make our observations, collect our data to test that hypothesis. And this is what the data collection uh, looked like. So we went out and walked around the forest and measured the diameter of trees like the, the guy on the left there is measuring how big around that tree uh, is. And so we did that for thousands and thousands of trees. The map on the right shows where we did all of that. So all of those spots that have a white uh, circle with uh, uh, like a cross uh, in the middle of the circle, that's where all the spots where we measured a bunch of trees at each of those locations. Okay, so once we did, went out and did all of that, measured all of those trees, um, this is what the, what the data looked like. So on the, on the far left there, the site number, that's just the, um, don't worry about that, that's just at the first spot we went to, the second spot we went to, the third spot we went to, and on uh, and, then on, ugh, and on and on all the way to 11. The next one is the average lodgepole pine diameter. So lodgepole pine are the trees that are killed by the mountain pine beetles. And that's saying in a, in a forest where we measured a bunch of the trees, what is the average size of those trees? And so what's the smallest average size tree uh, of the forest that we measured? Uh, at site number 11, is, has the smallest trees. And you, yeah, you're absolutely right. And what is the size of those trees at site 11? Uh, so the average size is four, so four centimeters. That's just, that's like, that, that's, that's pretty small. So, you know, a few inches. So it's not, um, so we're just looking at the, the number four, not at the other uh, columns there, the zero and the one. So which, um, which site has the largest trees and how big are those? Okay, site nine. Yes, that has the largest trees. And how many centimeters were those trees? Centimeters uh, diameter? 35, yeah. So that's a big difference between four centimeters of the tree size and a 35 centimeter tree. 35 centimeter tree is, is, is pretty big. Okay. The next column over, the percent of trees killed. So that's of all of the trees that are there, what percent of those died? And so zero, the zero down there at site 11, that means none of the trees were killed. Site 10, 73% of the trees were killed. So that's a, a, a lot of the trees, almost seven out of every 10 trees were, were dead. Okay, and then the one next to that is the proportion of the forest as lodgepole pine. So these, um, these forests don't just have lodgepole pine, which the mountain pine, which the, uh, the beetles like to eat. They have other uh, species there, other types of trees like, like spruce that these beetles don't attack. They don't really bother those other species. So that's saying that 99, so that uh, at site number one, 99% of the forest was lodgepole pine. That's pretty much the whole forest is lodgepole pine. Um, a value of one, like site number six, um, the entire forest is lodgepole pine. And then if you look at site number nine, um, only 15% uh, 
of those trees are lodgepole pine. So most of the other trees are not lodgepole pine. They're not um, good hosts for the mountain pine beetles. Um, okay, so now we're going to graph this data to answer our, our question. So what data will you graph to answer this question? So we need, we need to pick um, two of these variables, two of these columns that we're going to graph. Because um, this is one way that we can uh, look at these data, right? If we just look at this table, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. But if we put it on a graph and visualize it, uh, we can we, we'll be able to figure out what's going on and answer that question. So which two things do we want to graph? The, the options are across the top there, site number, average lodgepole pine diameter, percent of trees killed, and proportion of the forest that's lodgepole pine. And remember, we're wondering um, how tree size influences uh, how much the, uh, how many trees are killed in a forest. So does anybody have any thoughts on which of those two we're gonna graph? And the, how much of the trees? Yes, the percent of the trees killed, that is one of them. And then also the average lodgepole pine diameter. Those two together will tell us how the amount, how the size of the trees impacts the number, the percent of the trees killed. The site number column, right? That doesn't really help us answer the, the question. So we're not gonna worry about graphing that. So now go ahead and look at the graph. There's a blank graph uh, on, your, on your packet. And you are going to go ahead and graph the, all, the, all the information from that table. Okay, so you will go to that table and I'm gonna click back to the table real quick. And let's just, we'll just go one by one. So the first one, the top row, uh, the average uh, tree size is 25 centimeters and the percent of the trees killed is 67. Um, so you're gonna go over, so the, along the, the, the X axis, the bottom here, the average lodge is the average lodgepole pine, average lodgepole pine diameter. So we have 25. We're going to go along the bottom here. We we'll stop at 25, and then the percent of the trees killed tells you how far up to go on the y-axis. That was 67. So you're going to go up to somewhere around there. You're going to put a dot. So the next one, those trees were 19 centimeters, and 41% uh, died. So we go over to 19, which is right here, and go up to 47 and draw another dot. And we're gonna keep going just like that. Uh, so next one is 22 is their size. And so we go up here and what was the, and 61% died. Just like that, okay. Next one, the trees were 16 centimeters and 49% died. So each one of our sites becomes a dot on the graph. The next one, the trees were also 16, but 62% died. Okay, the next one, the trees are 14 centimeters. Forty-four percent died. Next one, they're thirteen. Thirty percent died. Okay, thanks, for, Tara. Next one, they were uh, five centimeters, and only one percent died. So it's gonna be way down here. All right, the next one's 35 and 15.
Okay, so that's all 11 sites that are on that are graphed on on my uh, chart here and yours yours should look similar. Um, what do we think? Do you think that we were right or wrong in thinking that larger uh, forests with larger trees have more trees that die? So you're absolutely right. The trees, the areas where there's a lot of trees killed tend to have the bigger trees. So if I drew a line like this, that kind of follows the data, uh, uh, what we measured, where, the, where there's small trees over here, there's not very many trees killed. Um, and then as you get bigger and bigger trees, you get more and more trees that die. So that I would say that that supports our hypothesis, but you pointed out that there's this plot out or this site out here where there's really big trees and not a lot of trees died. So that would be something we would want to look into why not all of the data are following what we expected. And that is something that you will do uh, when you continue the, the data nugget. You'll try to figure out what's going on with, with that one plot. There's something different about that plot than the rest of them that uh, is the reason for that. But in general, uh, the bigger the forest with the bigger trees had um, more trees die, and that's exactly what happened in this picture. Going going back to this picture, those tree those areas with all the red and gray where trees are dying, those are big old trees, and the areas with the green, those are the areas with tiny little trees that were uh, that are, are regrowing, and the beetles didn't bother them as much. And I wanna leave some time for any questions that you all have. And it could be about anything. It could be about forest or climate change or about being a scientist or basketball, anything. How long did I play basketball for? That's a great, I, I still play. So I've been playing for probably about 30 years. That's a great question. So the reason I became a scientist is because I cared a lot about our forests and I wanted to help take care of them. And so I wanted to understand what was going on in the forest so that we know uh, what we need to do with the forest and, how, and if they're healthy or not. 